Hello, I'm Philippe Spallard. After a career at NASA and Boeing, I'm in charge of turbulence at Flex Compute. Uh, today, I want to get you started in turbulence uh, without equations and give you a feeling of how we're going to address it in CFD. So first, I'll show you a direct numerical simulation of a boundary layer. It's work of Strelitz, funded by Boeing. Uh, so it's a solution of the navier Oaks equations with building of grid points. The flow is coming from the left. And so we have a boundary layer that was made turbulent um, and is coming. And you see what we call eddies, uh, vortices, uh, structures, vortex loops, and all that that are tumbling. Uh, you notice right away that the eddies are much smaller near the wall than uh, in the outer part of the boundary layer. Uh, this flow has a shock wave here, and the pressure rise of the shock wave is causing it to separate. You can see how the fluid with the fine structures is coming off the wall and then slowly mixing uh, with the rest of the uh, turbulent fluid. Uh, and you notice a pretty sharp interface between turbulent fluid and non turbulent fluid. So, this shows that we can simulate turbulence directly. But this is like the postage stamp for a millisecond. So we we'll need to uh, deal with that. Um, so let's look at length scales. Um, the boundary layer thickness is well under a centimeter at the leading edge. And the structures near the wall are the order of a few micrometers. And the time scales a few microseconds. So um, of course, we need to predict the lift and the drag of the entire airplane. So the scale there is of the order of 100 meters. So you can see that the ratio of scales is huge. Um, if we did a brute force approach to gridding, we'd be looking at 10 to the 24th power grid points. And the best we can do today is around 10 to the 10th. So you can see that there are so many orders of magnitude that uh, actually it may be that we never can build a computer large enough to do this, um, GPU or not, quantum computing or not. So we're going to have to do some modeling. A little, another thing about the nature of turbulence is the energy cascade. Uh, there's an excellent uh, simulation by Beck and Gassner. So this is a periodic geometry. Think of uh, Lego blocks uh, lined up in all three directions, uh, repeating forever. And, um, and we're plotting vorticity, which is how fast is the uh, fluid uh, spinning. And this is the initial condition, which in the Taylor Green vortex is very simple, just sines and cosines. Um, but once you let the Navier Stokes equations uh, proceed, then the uh, spinning uh, regions start uh, twisting around each other and stretching and becoming uh, smaller. And if you keep going, then you get to a state that looks like this where the um, energy is now spread over all the length scales. Uh, now you can still see that periodic cube. Uh, what's interesting is there are some regions that have not uh, filled with turbulence yet. Um, but the ratio of the size of the box to the size of the smallest eddies uh, is a function of the Reynolds number of the simulation and um, is controlled by the viscosity. So I call this turning potatoes into spaghetti. Uh, 1941 in Moscow, Kolmogorov had a simple theory predicting the famous k to the minus five third spectrum. Everybody looks for that in their simulations. But again, the Reynolds number here is 1600 compared with roughly uh, 10 million uh, for the airplane boundary layer and probably even more for a submarine. So now Reynolds averaging of a turbulent flow field. Uh, again, the simulations by Strelitz. And on the left, we have a large eddy simulation, which is similar to the direct simulation, but doesn't resolve the smallest eddies. Um, but uh, the flow is three-dimensional and unsteady again. And what we you see here is the yellow counterclockwise vortex uh, coming off. And then it's going to propagate to the right. And then it will have a, an opposite vortex coming from the upper surface. Um, and so it's a very compli complex flow. So Reynolds averages, averaging consists in, say, picking a point in space and time averaging or averaging the third direction. And what comes out is uh, this object. 
uh, where we're uh, again plotting the vorticity, but it's now smooth and symmetric and the streamlines, which make it look like the flow is just uh, spinning. Uh, and so you can see that coming from this rich, very three-dimensional and time-dependent uh, situation, we have considerably stripped the information. We, uh, but the principle of turbulence modeling is to find equations that will give you this average field uh, to a fairly good uh, approximation. And uh, it's not easy. Um, and now you'll you ask me, why not do the simulation, the large eddy simulation? Well, if this is uh, the body of a helicopter or the smokestack of a factory, uh, you could spend the millions of grid points. But this could be the spoke on the wheel of your bicycle, and you don't want to spend a million grid points per millimeter of spoke. So then we would do averaging, and we need to get a good enough uh, drag for the spokes. Thank you.